we're going on a field trip. So maybe you've heard, but scientists say the Earth is experiencing its sixth major extinction event. Which means things are almost as bad for the animal kingdom right now as when that giant asteroid blew up all the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Yeah, it's not good guys, and this time, humans are pretty much all to blame. But of course, that's a story for another day. What I want to know is, when the dinosaurs died out, how did other animals survive? I'm meeting up with Aiden Williams Dale to get a behind the scenes tour at Reptilia, an educational facility that's home to a lot of animals whose ancestors didn't go extinct. They evolved into animals we know and love today. What we don't think about a lot of the time is how we have a lot of modern day dinosaurs with us today. And one of the best examples is Kiva, our African great parents. Yeah. Birds are actually close relatives to a lot of those prehistoric animals known as the like T-Rex and Velociraptors and those are known as theropod dinosaurs. When you see a lot of those prehistoric uh, animals, you know, raptors and T-Rex and other theropods, a lot of them will ha uh, have those like very sharp teeth. And as you can see with one of our you know, modern day birds, they just have a beak. During that time of evolution and adaptation, you actually start to see that mouth starting to form a beak over time. So there were certain points where uh, certain species of raptors and other theropods where they were starting to develop beaks and also had uh, small teeth that were still left over from their previous ancient ancestors. So over time, depending on how they used their mouths for uh, what they were adapted to, their beak would change the shape and the size to be appropriate for whatever they're eating. That looks like a dinosaur. Aiden takes me over to meet Mr. Blue, a dwarf caiman alligator. Being small, probably helped Mr. Blue's ancestors survive. Although they're small and may not be as strong as larger animals, they are a lot faster, they have a higher metabolism, they're able to move around more efficiently, and they're able to go into crevices where most large animals can't get to. So having a smaller size also helped with mobility and just survival as a whole. Because dinosaurs were wiped out, so many things had a chance to kind of grasp at that moment and adapt to become uh, what they are today. Like this guy. His name is Friday. He's a giant monitor lizard, and even though he looks like he descended from the dinosaurs, he's actually quite different. These guys are in a completely separate branch of reptile. Uh, with lizards and snakes, they're known as squamates, while as a lot of your prehistoric animals like dinosaurs, uh, crocodilians, and birds, they're in the archosaur group. So it's a, a separate branch of reptile entirely. One of the largest species of prehistoric monitor lizards is known as megalania. And that large monitor lizard uh, was known to hunt down uh, a, a small prehistoric species of horse, <laughs> and they were also known to hunt down small humans as well. Great. So Friday's ancestors probably ate my ancestors. Good thing we've both evolved since then. Right, Friday? Friday? This has been a Ty Asks Why field trip. Thanks for watching. Check out the full episode on survival and extinction. Available now, wherever you get your podcasts.